So this liquid was called the wine of the fairies and it's been associated in a lot of cultures with supernatural healing. But in Ireland they say you've got to leave it for the fairies. In some uh, medicines it's been used for blemishes of the skin or to cleanse weary eyes. Um, in popular medicine, and um, western medicine, the plant has been used for Lyme's disease. And Lyme's disease is caused by a swirly whirly looking bacteria called a spirochete, called Variella burgdorferi, and is transmitted to humans um, from ticks. And Lyme's disease causes fever, chills, a rash from the central point that often can't be seen in many people. And it causes joint pain, muscle ache, stiff neck, chronic fatigue and brain fog. So it's become very popularised in um, Turtle Island and Western Herbalists for its action for shifting Lyme disease. And a lot of herbalists say that this herb takes the Lyme spirochete parasite out of the muscles and out of the tissues into the bloodstream for the white blood cells to recognize it. But I've actually not seen any evidence of that in the literature. But what I have seen is that the root extracts and the lethal extracts, basically um, the chemicals called the iridoid glycosides, sylvestricides three and four, have anti-Borella activity, but the, the leaf extract is very cytotoxic and anti-cancer, and actually is too toxic to take as a medicine, as a herbal medicine, but the root, which is used traditionally, is used for um, Borella infection very successfully. Traditional medicines for Lyme's disease is doxycycline, and that's a really strong antibiotic that has quite hideous side effects for some people. So if you can actually help heal um, chronic Lyme's disease with herbal medicine, it tends to be preferable. So now we're gonna go to traditional medicine. And this plant has been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. Um, just so you know, it's a plant that lives um, in Europe, in Asia, and in North Africa. I couldn't find any um, use in other, in other parts of the world in the literature. And in Chinese medicine, it's called Zhu Zhuan. I probably pronounced that wrong. And it means to, to restore what is broken. And in Chinese medicine, it's used as a yang tonic. And yang tonics are used to, for the utilization of yin and yin is condensed stored up energy. So if someone doesn't have condensed stored up energy or they have yin deficiency, you do not want to use this herb. And yin deficiency um, means someone that has um, symptoms like a low grade fever, they may have spontaneous sweats, they often have insomnia and they have very dry symptoms like what you can hear with my voice now, a dry cough, a dry mouth, um, they might have a mala flush. I'm on chemotherapy, so I've got a lot of signs of yin, um, yin deficiency. And basically, it tallies with the Western astrology of it being a martial plant. It has yang tonics, are very exciting. They boost sexual energy, they boost mental creativity. And in Chinese medicine, they build the muscle um, the sinews and the lower back. Traditionally, um, this plant, the root is used for lower back pain, for sore knees, for sore backs, and for osteoarthritis, which is typically arthritis of weight-bearing joints. Um, you would use this herb for conditions that are exacerbated by the cold. So people that have arthritis that's worsened by the cold, if they have conditions that are worsened by the heat, you do not want to use this plant. In Chinese medicine, it's stir-fried in vinegar to enhance blood movement and for pain alleviation, and it's dried fried for uterine bleeding. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's used for threatened miscarriage 
used to, due to liver and kidney deficiency. It promotes blood circulation, it strengthens, strengthens the bones and tendons, it's diaphoretic, it breaks uh, fever, and it's stomatic, stomachic, I can't say it. In um, European medicine, it's the root has been boiled and used for jaundice. The actions of the plant include it's orexigenic, and orexigenic means it stimulates appetite when there's a lacking in appetite due to feeling poorly, which often happens with jaundice. It's also been found to be neuroprotective, which is one of the reasons it works very well in um, in um, brain fog conditions. But it, they've also found that chemicals in the plants are anticholinesterase, and cholinesterase um, is a enzyme that's um, linked to neurodegeneration with um, Alzheimer's and dementias. Um, chemicals in the plants have also been found to be um, antibacterial, specifically for Staphylococcus aureus and E. coli. There's these chemicals in the plant that are bitter and they're called sesquiterpene lactones and they're saponins and they inhibit many cancers um, in vitro. But they also know traditionally that it's been used for cancer and for um, blood purifying. Um, the plant has also been used for an indigo substitute and um, when mixed with the mineral alum it turns yellow. Um, just going back to how the, how the way the plant is used, it's dug up in the first year in the spring and it has a long tap root and you use it in the spring in the first year when the chi is in the roots and um, when it's like at this time of the year, you don't want to use it. By the way, I've just touched the plant and jabbed my hand on it. And if you look down the back, it's full of spikes. And all these spikes are actually linked to the doctrine of signatures because they hurt you. And it's said that the plant actually helps with spiky pain, neurological pain that's often seen with um, multiple sclerosis or with, with neuropathic pain.